to the son of David, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hi, I'm Pastor Lara with the Tri-County Parish of the United Methodist Church. These four small churches are in three counties with two pastors and one heart for serving Christ. We're part of the Williamsport District at the Susquehanna Annual Conference, and we're so glad that you came to join us this morning on Palm Sunday when we remember the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. When everybody cried out in welcome, crying out, Hosanna, save us, Lord. And to when people said, tell them to be quiet, they're making too much noise, Jesus said, if I tell them to be quiet, the stones will surely cry out. Today, wherever you are, I invite you to join us and cry out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, on this day, your son, Jesus Christ, entered the holy city of Jerusalem and was proclaimed king by those who spread their garments and palm branches along his way. Let those branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our Lord and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. In his name we pray. Amen. Before I share with you the gospel this morning, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the palm branches. Normally at this time of year, most churches would be filled with palm branches waving and people shouting Hosanna, but if you're like us, you're in quarantine, self-isolation. And so we were unable to get the palms and distribute them and wave them and have the crowds cheering. And that's okay because, well, the people in Jesus' time used what they had, those branches that were most common to them. I invite you, wherever you are, to get those branches that are common to your area. For us right now, among the greenery, we have pine tree branches, pine boughs. This is off of the rhododendron bush in our yard. Um, some places, the pussy willows are starting to come into bloom, or the yellow forsythia. Our forsythia bush wasn't blooming too brightly yet, so we didn't bring a branch of it. And you can even go online and find color pictures like this that you can color at home. I invite you, if you have one of these, to print it out, color it, make it nice and green, and Wherever you are, walk around your house, maybe from room to room, or in circles around the outside of your house. Make your own parade and wave your palm branches, whatever shape they may be, and shout, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And then hang some of those green branches on your door so people will know that Today, even when we can't be together, we are still remembering and celebrating Jesus' ride into Jerusalem. I'd like to tell you more about that ride. Reading from the first book of the New Testament, it's the book of Matthew, and it's one of four that's called a gospel, which tells the good news of Jesus Christ. And I'll be reading from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11, from the New Revised Standard Version. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble 
and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and their colt and put their cloaks on cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Will you bow your head and join me in prayer again? Lord God, we come to you this day united by our love for you, by curiosity, wanting to know more about you and your story. Lord, wherever we are this day, we invite your Holy Spirit to be among us, to be present with us, revealing your message and your teachings and your love to us. Lord, may everything we say and do only serve to honor and glorify your name. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. Have you ever ridden on a horse? Maybe when you were a child you went to a carnival or a festival somewhere and took a pony ride. Maybe you see them at the zoo, or maybe you don't even have horses, but you live somewhere where there are animals like a horse or a donkey. Would you ride a horse, though, or an animal that had never been ridden? Some of you might, but most people wouldn't. Now, how many of you have ever ridden a donkey? Would you ride one of those that had never been ridden before? Donkeys, from what I've learned, are actually pretty smart and docile. Yes, they're known for having a bit of a stubborn streak, but that's only in the interest of self-preservation. Like in the story of Balaam's donkey that can be found in the Old Testament book of Numbers, chapter 22. And yet donkeys get a bad rap. From what I've been able to learn online, training a donkey takes a little bit longer than training a horse because you can't break a donkey of its stubbornness. You can't break its will and still expect it to allow you to ride it. It won't because it doesn't trust you. Yet Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey that had never been ridden before. It was a journey of about 1.7 miles. Instinctively, the donkey knew that it could trust Jesus, and Jesus trusted the donkey. Okay, maybe Jesus had a slight advantage as the Son of God, the God who had created the donkey in the first place. But still, the train wasn't nice, flat, and smooth that they traveled. The train was a little bit on the tricky side. It was around a mountain, down into a valley, and up the other side, making it a very long 1.7 miles. I suspect it would be similar to the Ellington Mountain Road around these parts, or some of the hills of Tennessee. I imagine the road that day would have been crowded with pilgrims, families from Nazareth, Galilee, other places all coming to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, to celebrate the Passover festival, a festival that the Israelites had been commanded by God to keep forever. The book of Exodus, which is also in the Old Testament, chapter 12, verse 14, tells us that God says, This day shall be a day of remembrance for you, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall 
observe it as a perpetual ordinance. A perpetual ordinance, meaning to continue to celebrate and tell the story of how the angel of death passed over the houses of the Israelites who were obedient to God while living in bondage and slavery in Egypt. You can read more about that in Exodus chapters 11 through 13. A donkey then is much better suited to this kind of up and down and twisty turny road than a horse. Maybe that's why donkeys are used in the Grand Canyon. It may be another reason why Mary, the mother of Jesus, had ridden a donkey to Bethlehem when she was pregnant with Jesus. Have you ever wondered what Jesus might have been thinking on his ride into Jerusalem? Do you think that maybe for a little bit he would have remembered the story his mom told him about the time he was born? Maybe he thought back to the time that he was 12 and went to Jerusalem with his family to celebrate the Passover and they left without him. You can read about that in Luke in the New Testament, chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. Do you think he was thinking about anything to keep his mind occupied from what was coming? The pain, the suffering that he would experience in the home of the high priest, the unbearable flogging from the specially trained Roman lictors, experts at inflicting punishment, and then the humiliation of carrying his cross, or at least the cross beam through the town, and the agony as he was nailed to it and raised up in the air. The Roman soldiers attempted to break Jesus with their torment and their mockery of him, stripping him naked and whipping him to within inches of his life in order to make him cry uncle. And yet, they couldn't. As far as we know, Jesus remained silent when the high priest questioned him, when he was spat upon, as told in Matthew chapter 26, verse 63. Jesus wasn't broken, but he came in order to fix us, we who are broken in so many different ways. What are the broken spots in your lives? Those things that threaten to break you, to bring you down to your knees, I know there are some of you today who are carrying burdens that just seem too much to bear. Worry over finances, job loss, bill paying, putting food on the table or keeping a roof over your head, the cost of gas for in your car, worry for your church, worry over health issues. The big one right now is especially worry over COVID-19 or the coronavirus, either for yourself or a loved one, worry over a child or a grandchild or some other close friend or relative, the heaviness of these concerns of being isolated can make it hard to get out of bed in the morning, to look in the mirror. Sometimes the weight of just pretending that everything is okay, when in reality, it isn't, becomes too much. We feel let down, disappointed by family, friends, those whom we thought we could trust. In short, there are times when we feel broken, discouraged, and we don't know how to keep on going. This is the time when we should join the chorus of weary pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem and cry out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Lord, save us, save us. Other 
others will let us down. Others will disappoint us. Only Jesus will not. We might not like the answer that we get when we pray. The answer might not come as soon as we would like it. But it will come. For the one who is faithful will not disappoint us. And Jesus was faithful to the point of going to the cross to save us, to atone for our shortcomings, to bear our burdens. Is there something that is weighing you down? Something that is threatening to break you? I invite you to join me in prayer wherever you are. Don't be broken by your burden. Lay it at the foot of the cross and cry out this Palm Sunday, save me, Lord Jesus, save me. I promise your cries will not fall on deaf ears. Let us pray. Save us, Lord Jesus, save us. As we sing Hosanna to the King of Kings, we cry out for your presence with us, longing to be relieved of the burdens we carry, knowing that Christ can and will carry them for us. We thank you, Lord of heaven and earth, for loving us in our brokenness, brokenness and restoring us for your gift of peace that passes all understanding. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad you joined us today, and wherever you are, know that you are not alone, even if it feels like it. Know that the Son of God is with you in spirit and in truth. And know, too, that the world is praying for you, that the we are praying as we all suffer together, side by side. Come back again, and I invite you to spread the word, but not the germs. God bless. <laughs>